Hello everyone, Physician Lars Hokum here again. In this video we will be talking about ischemia and ECG. And as in the previous videos, you can jump to the different uh, sections that you uh, find relevant by clicking the links in the description down below. First, we'll start off with a few words on the basics of uh, microbial ischemia, infarction and statistics. Then we'll review the three classic signs of uh, microbial ischemia and uh, throw in a few less known um, ischemic uh, presentations. And then lastly, we'll end with a quick review of uh, blood work related to heart infarcts and go through a few ECG examples to solidify our knowledge. Now, if you're entirely new to ECG reading, I um, recommend uh, checking out the previous videos I made um, on the subject before we uh, jump into this uh, material. So basically, when we are talking about ischemia, we are talking about tissue hypoxia. And depending on the degree of uh, ischemia, we can um, observe different degrees of um, injury. Starting with um, ischemia itself, which is uh, basically a reversible or offending condition to the tissue, where there is too little oxygen. Now, if the hypoxia is um, severe or prolonged enough, eventually an infarct uh, may occur, which is injury to the heart uh, muscle. And infarcts eventually progress to necrosis, which is dead tissue. Now, we can divide myocardial infarcts into two groups based on the pathogenesis. Uh, type 1 infarcts are when we have, like here on the left, mechanical blockage of um, a corneal vessel. The cause can, for instance, be a ruptured atherosclerotic plaque. And any tissue that is downstream from this um, blockage will be um, at risk for uh, ischemia and infarcts. Now, type 2 infarcts uh, are when the problem is um, not in the uh, blood flow through the coronary vessels, but rather in the blood itself. As uh, in, for example, severe anemia, when there is uh, such a lack of hemoglobin that there, the, um, there is too little oxygen in the blood to supply the tissue demand. The basic uh, clinical picture of a patient undergoing myocardial infarction is of a person, often somewhat middle-aged, but not necessarily so, who is having a pressure sensation centrally in the chest, uh, with or without uh, radiating pain up uh, the neck, uh, jaw or left arm and or shoulder. He or she may be short of breath, cold sweating and uh, clearly in um, distress. Now, all guidelines uh, specify that urgent ECG uh, examination is uh, mandatory. This is because based on the ECG findings we can uh, quickly determine firstly whether or not microbial ischemia is present and secondly to a certain extent make a judgment on how severe the ischemia in question is. What we are looking for is if there is an, a STEMI or ST elevation microbial infarction like uh, illustrated here and this indicates that a full thickness uh, heart infarct has um, occurred or if there is an end stemi. And end stemis, uh, we're gonna discuss this further uh, in a second, but this is an interesting group. This can be anything from uh, T-wave uh, inversion, uh, significant Q-waves, to ST-segment depression. So this is a very large, diverse uh, group. And an end stemi microbial infarction indicates that we have uh, partial um, heart uh, muscle wall uh, thickness damage. Uh, depending whether or not we are talking about a STEMI or an NSTEMI, the treatment is different. STEMIs in general are uh, recommended, uh, more um, urgent invasive therapy, such as uh, percutaneous uh, intervention, PCI, if such uh, facilities are available. So now that we have a basic grip on uh, what uh, microbial infarction is and the two large um, groups that we can divide uh, their presentation into, Let's talk a little bit about the statistics, because um, as we previously discussed, separating STEMI from NSTEMI infarctions can be essential to um, choosing the uh, optimal treatment. So how, in terms of uh, findings and fre frequency, does uh, microbial infarction present itself on the ECG strip? Now, if we look to the Norwegian Heart Infarct Registry, which um, is a system that registers all uh, myocardial infarcts uh, treated in the Norwegian hospitals throughout the year, uh, we can observe the following findings. Now, 3 out of 10 infarcts presented as STEMI, 
and 7 out of 10 in Forex presented as N STEMI. Now, observing um, STEMIs are uh, fairly straightforward. As we can see here on the illustration on the left, it's just uh, observing for an um, ST segment elevation from this uh, baseline along the lead, which is the isoelectric baseline. And where we, we are measuring when we're talking about one millimeter or more ST elevation in, uh, uh, in leads, uh, we are looking for the J point shift. And the J point is where this uh, this turning point between the upcoming S wave and the ST segment occurs. And this movement here is what we are referring to when we're talking about the ST elevation. Now, for a finding uh, to be significant uh, in terms of a schema, it has to be present in two adjacent leads or more. Now, when we're talking about um, ST elevation, we have also we also need to talk about something called benign early repolarization, which is uh, when we have, strictly speaking, ST elevation, but it's not a significant finding. So if we see in this bottom illustration, we see a frowny and a smiley. Now, when there occurs an ST elevation, but it seems like the isoelectric baseline is uh, kind of, um, uh, the ST segment here is kind of looking or searching for the uh, isoelectric baseline, we see that it makes uh, the ST segment makes part of a smiley. So this is a benign early repolarization. It's not an indication of an infarct. Now, if we see that the ST segment uh, does not care or does not uh, have any uh, sort of relationship with the isoelectric baseline, we are talking about uh, uh, STEMI. Now, of course, if you are in doubt, always consider um, confirmatory blood tests and always remember that the, clinic, uh, the clinical picture is uh, more important than these G findings. Now, the second big group, the most um, popular presentation uh, of uh, mycotal infarcts on the ECG were N-STEMIs. Now, N-STEMIs are, uh, as uh, we mentioned, an interesting group because we have different uh, types of uh, different presentations here. Now, uh, also please remember that uh, no findings uh, is possible. So it is possible to have a mycotal infarction where there is no uh, findings on the ECG. Uh, it looks normal, and this is what we call an N-STEMI also. Now, uh, different types of uh, potentially N-STEMI infarcts are T-wave inversion, as we see here, significant Q-waves, meaning that they have uh, the depth uh, one-third of the uh, following R-wave or more, like here, uh, frequent uh, ventricular extrasystoles, like this is one ventricular extrasystole, and if they occur more than six times per minute, it is a significant sign of ischemia. If we have a newly appearing uh, left uh, bundle branch uh, block, including anterior and posterior hemiblocks, which are subdivisions of left bundle branch blocks, if we have a suddenly appearing uh, uh, atrial or ventricular uh, fibrillation, it could be a sign of uh, an infarct that has occurred that triggered the arrhythmic uh, event. And uh, lastly, ventricular tachycardia and fibrillation uh, could also be triggered by an infarct. Now, what we're going to be focusing on for the next few slides is um, a general appreciation of how to see ischemia on ECG. Not only infarcts, but also reversible ischemic events. We're going to start out with a few um, uh, words on the uh, three classic signs of ischemia and then uh, review um, some um, either um, uh, less well-known uh, signs or more indirect uh, presentations of um, ischemia. Now, starting with uh, the three classic um, uh, signs of ischemia, we have firstly T inversion, which uh, indicates uh, an ongoing ischemia. It is uh, reversible and uh, it uh, appears uh, immediately or as long as ischemia is ongoing. Um, secondly is uh, ST elevation depression, which uh, indicates uh, an acute mycotal infarction, and it is uh, uh, potentially irreversible damage or injury uh, to the heart muscle. And uh, lastly, it is uh, the significant Q waves, which um, tell us that a previous uh, infarct has occurred. It is a sign of necrosis. And the criteria for a Q wave to be significant is that it has the amplitude or depth of one third or more of um, the following R wave. Now, so this was uh, the three uh, classic signs of um, ischemia that you, sh you should always uh, look for when you do uh, an ECG reading. 
Now, other potentially less known signs of um, ischemia are the frequent uh, ventricular extrasystoles, uh, meaning more than six per minute, uh, newly appearing left uh, bundle branch uh, blocks, which uh, should always be treated as um, an end stemi if accompanied by uh, symptoms of myocardial infarction, uh, pressure sensation in the chest, radiating pain up uh, the left uh, uh, neck, uh, jaw, shoulder or arm, and a patient in a, in a bad uh, state. Now, uh, ventricular tachycardia fibrillation can also be uh, uh, triggered by uh, ischemic events in the heart. And uh, the same uh, goes, uh, yes, for atrial uh, fibrillation and uh, flutter. Now, and now we've uh, strictly been speaking about um, ECG in ischemia, but it, uh, in terms of the, the wider picture here, it's uh, interesting to talk about um, the different blood uh, tests that uh, uh, one uh, can do. Now, currently, the most used um, uh, blood uh, tests for ischemia and myocardial infarction are the troponin isoforms, I and T. The advantages of these uh, tests is that they give us a, a definitive uh, indication of whether or not uh, myocardial injury uh, has or is occurring, and uh, repeated testing can be done to uh, follow the development of the ischemic uh, insult to the myocardium over time. Now, uh, on the flip side, the disadvantage is time, because uh, with the current technology, the earliest detection is possible three hours after the onset of um, uh, the myocardial infarction. Uh, but as we previously discussed, uh, this is uh, too late for uh, invasive uh, uh, therapy or intervention like uh, PCI. So uh, to summarize, um, ECG is not as certain as uh, blood tests, but it is uh, instantaneous. It gives us an immediate uh, indication on uh, what kind of um, uh, injury is, uh, is occurring in the heart. And the blood tests are more accurate, but uh, they unfortunately require time to be useful. Okay, so now we've uh, reviewed uh, the theory of um, recognizing ischemia on ECG strips, and we will attempt to apply uh, the knowledge uh, to a handful of um, uh, practical cases. Now, if you would like to uh, maybe review a more general introduction to ECG reading, please click uh, the embedded link. And if you would like to attempt to solve uh, these um, ECG strips or recognize the ischemia yourself before I uh, start uh, uh, going uh, reviewing them, you can um, you can always uh, pause the video and then click resume when you are ready to, to hear the explanation. All right, so let's jump to the first case. This was uh, a 75 year old uh, man, which uh, had a history of stable angina pectoris and uh, hypertension. He had experienced uh, a central uh, pressure sensation in his chest, a cold sweating, feeling unwell uh, for the last 30 minutes before his uh, wife eventually made uh, contact with uh, the emergency medical services. He had uh, at first attempted uh, to uh, uh, get relief uh, from using his trusty nitroglycerin sublingual uh, tablets. And uh, this is uh, the ECG strip that the uh, ambulance workers uh, recorded before I arrived on the scene. And what we can see here quite uh, easily is an ST segment elevation uh, in the leads um, uh, 2, 3 and AVF. You can possibly see it better on this um, uh, zoomed in image. What we can see here is um, ST elevation in uh, leads 2, 3 and AVF, indicating, if you remember the placement of the leads, an inferior wall um, as uh, STEMI, uh, ST elevation myocardial infarction. And this uh, patient uh, was, um, of course, um, rushed to the hospital in hopes of uh, doing uh, an inter intervention like uh, PCI. All right, so this is the next case. I don't remember the specific patient history uh, here, but um, what we, we always look for are um, uh, three signs of ischemia. The inverted T's, the significant Q waves, and the ST segment elevation and or depression. And what we can quite easily see here are examples of widespread uh, T wave inversion, 
We see it especially here in the Precorial lead, starting in um, V2, moving down to V6, and also in the standard leads 1 and AVL, indicating uh, ischemia of the anterior lateral uh, myocardial wall, heart wall. Okay, uh, so last uh, case. Uh, this patient just took uh, a routine ECG reading, no uh, specific uh, symptoms. And uh, let's see if you can spot any signs of ischemia here. And um, uh, just to, for your information, this, um, this is in fact my own ECG reading. I'm feeling uh, perfectly fine. So I hope you don't see any signs of um, ischemia. <laughs> but, uh, but what we can see here is um, inverted uh, T waves in lead V1, uh, V1 which is uh, not uh, unusual. And remember, uh, ischemic findings have to be in two adjacent leads or more in order to be significant. So this is a, un, uh, not a significant uh, T-wave inversion here. Uh, it is always inverted in AVR due to the lead's uh, placement. And in terms of ST elevation, yes, there is uh, maybe tendency to ST elevation in V2, V3. But this has uh, the look of uh, benign early repolarization, which is, uh, in fact, ST elevation, but it's not uh, a sign of ischemia or infarct. What we have here is maybe one, one and a half millimeter up from the isometric baseline, but you see the ST segment uh, nicely tries to align itself with the isometric baseline, which means, in fact, it is not a sign of ischemia. Okay. That's um, all for uh, today. We now reviewed uh, the signs of uh, ischemia, uh, the theory behind it, and applied this knowledge to a handful of cases. I hope you found this uh, discussion helpful. And if you have any feedback, I would love to hear from you down in the comments. If uh, you would like a structured review on uh, how to uh, read each of these strips, uh, please uh, click the embedded link on the left. And if you'd like uh, a review of all the arrhythmias you can expect to encounter on ECG strips, neatly organized into two large groups, please uh, click the link on the right. And uh, if you'd like uh, more material similar to this, you can always hit the subscribe or thumbs up button. Alright, take care.